With the right attitudes and determination, we'll be able to overcome and conquer the challenges in our lives. This message is entitled, Fight the Right Fight. Here is Pastor Dale O'Shields. Today I want to talk about a, a story that most of us, if not all of us, are very familiar with. It's found in 1 Samuel chapter 17, and I want to talk to you about fighting the right fight in your life, fighting the right fight. You know, a lot of times in life, we kind of encourage people and remind people not to fight, okay? Uh, and in fact, fighting is not a very good thing when it comes to personal relationships, interactions with people, and there's certain fights you don't want to fight, but there are fights that you need to fight in your life. In fact, in many ways, when it comes to the spiritual realm of your life, you better be a fighter. Because if you don't learn how to fight, you're going to be in really big trouble. And there's certain spiritual battles that you need to fight. You need to rise up with some strength on the inside of you and use your faith. The fight, the good fight of faith. Because life is filled with challenges. I have a prophetic word for you for 2022. Are anybody ready to receive God's word for 2022? You ready for this? Here it goes. You're going to have problems this year. You're going to face some challenges this year. That's, I assure you, I can count on the reality that that's what's going to happen in your life and my life. We're all going to face some challenges in 2022. It's reality. There are going to be some things that you're going to have to learn to overcome in your life. There are going to be some things you're going to have to learn to fight. You had to fight some things in 2021. You're going to fight some things in 2022 as well. And all through the Bible, we find men and women who faced challenges. They faced problems. The Bible is a book that is not filled with just everybody having a happy-go-lucky life and everything going well for people all the time. No, you read this Bible and you see people who face really big problems, everyday challenges and big problems in their life. And part of what you'll also note in the Bible is you'll note that some people did really well when they handled their problems and some people didn't do quite so well. Some people learned to fight. Some people did not fight well. Some responded well to them, some did not. And there's one man in the Bible that consistently shows up as a man who learns something about a fight, fighting spiritually. Now, he had his moments of failure as well, and we're not, the purpose today is not to talk about that. We want to highlight the fighting element of this man that shows up in an early stage, early in his life as a young man, a young adult actually a teenager more than likely. And so if you're a teenager here today, this is a word for you. It's not something, by the way, the Bible applies to people of all ages. You can never be too young or too old for God. Isn't that good to know? Never too young, never too old for God. But this young man, probably somewhere between maybe 16 and 18 years of age, we don't know exactly how old he was at this particular period of time, but here's a young man who learned to fight a, a, a tremendous battle, and it really revealed something about his nature and his character and the young man as a young man by the name of David. And the story that we are looking at today is 1 Samuel chapter 17. It is the story of David's battle with Goliath. Most of you remember and know something about the story of David and Goliath. Let me give you a little history and then we're going to read some verses that will set up the message for today. At this particular time that David shows up in a battle with Goliath, something had happened. The Israelite army was now being contended with or faced by or actually faced down by a group of people called the Philistines or the Philistines, depending upon how you pronounce it. I bounce back and forth between those two pronunciations. So here the Philistines came against Israel's army and David had two of his brothers that were in Israel's army, and so they were soldiers. David did not go to battle at this particular time because he was required by his father, Jesse, to stay home and take care of the sheep. He was next to the youngest in the family. In fact, he needed to take care of his father's sheep. And so there he is in this situation at home taking care of his daddy's sheep. But one day, Dad, Jesse, comes to him and says, Son, I want you to take some bread and cheese to your brothers in the army, and I want you to find out how they're doing and bring me back a report so that I will understand what's really going on with them. It's sort of like, give me a firsthand report of how, how the family's doing on the battlefield. And so David, in obedience to his father, unbeknownst to what would be a destiny point in his life, he makes the decision to go and do what his dad had asked him to do. Kids, remember something. 
It's always good to obey your parents. You never know that when you obey your parents, God's setting something up in your life that's really good for your life. Okay. And so in that moment, David's father gave him the instruction. David, listen, David would have never been on that battlefield that day had he not obeyed his dad. And he did exactly what his father asked him to do. And he goes to the battlefield and he discovers something. He discovers that the battle is at a standstill. Nobody's fighting anyone because something has happened on the battlefield that's quite unusual. And what had happened was that Goliath had arrived on the battlefield and he was intimidating the armies of Israel. So let's walk ourselves through this story together. There's a number of verses I want to read, but you'll enjoy me as I read them because I know it's great always to refresh ourselves with this tremendous story. I'm going to actually start down in the chapter of verse 16. Here's what's going on. For 40 days, every morning and evening, the Philistine champion, by the way, that was Goliath, shudder, strutted, I should say, in front of the Israelite army. Verse 25a, have you seen the giant, the men asked. He comes out each day to defy Israel. And so every day for 40 days, Goliath would come out and he would confront the armies of Israel trying to get someone to come and fight the battle with him. And so this is an ongoing process. Verse 32, David shows up on the scene and David makes a declaration to the king, King Saul, who was there. And by the way, you need to read this whole chapter because I'm kind of jumping through the chapter to different verses just to sort of lay out an outline to the story. David shows up on the battlefield. David sees what's going on and David is disturbed by it. So he goes to the king, King Saul, and says this, don't worry about this Philistine, David told Saul. Read this phrase with me, what I'll go I'll go fight him. So David makes the declaration. To this point, no one has been willing to fight Goliath. Everybody's intimidated. All of Israel's army is intimidated by this huge guy. I mean, he's over nine feet tall. He's, um, he's an incredible uh, human specimen. And so no one wanted to fight him. But David shows up. He's not even a soldier. He's simply a bread and cheese delivery boy. That's all he is, okay? He's a messenger boy that shows up. His dad sent him there. He's not supposed to be in the army, but he sees what's going on. And read again with me what he said to the king. I'll, come on, read with me. I'll, that's a very important statement. I'll go fight him, he says. Now notice what happens. Here's the fight. He picked up, as you know the story, five smooth stones from a stream and put them into his shepherd's bag. Then armed only with a shepherd's staff and sling, he started across the valley to fight the Philistine. Goliath walked out toward David with his shield bearer ahead of him, sneering in contempt at this ruddy-faced boy. And so here's the story as it now unfolds. He's now getting ready to fight. Am I a dog? He roared at David that you come at me with a stick, and he cursed David by the names of his God. That's the idolatrous Philistine gods. Come over here, and I'll give your flesh to the birds and wild animals, Goliath yelled. David replied. Say that with me. David. So earlier, what did it say about David? I'll go what? Fight him. He got his stones, and then now David, this, this big mouth giant, has been blowing off a lot of words to David. David could have been intimidated, but instead, David did what? He replied to the Philistine, You come to me with sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied today, the Lord. Not I, but the Lord will conquer you, and I will kill you and cut off your head, and then I will give the dead bodies of your men to the birds and wild animals, and the whole world will know there is a God in Israel. We could stop right there and go home today. Okay. I already like this guy, don't you? Okay. It's called talking trash. Okay. <laughs> David, Goliath moves his mouth, but David replies. He comes back, but this is not trash to David. It is a de declar de declarative statement of his faith and what God is going to do. Let's read on. And everyone, is there, and everyone assembled here will know that the Lord rescues his people, but not with sword and spear. This is the Lord's battle. And I love this. And he will give you to us as Goliath moved closer to attack. David quickly ran out to he didn't run away. He ran to okay, meet him, reaching into his shepherd's bag and taking out a stone. He hurled it with his 
uh, sling and hit the Philistine in the forehead. The stone sank in and Goliath stumbled and fell face down on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with only a sling and a stone for he had no sword. Then David ran over and pulled Goliath's sword from its sheath. David used it to kill him and cut off his head. When the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they turned and ran. A big win in the category of David's life, but more importantly, in the category of God's victory for Israel over the Philistines. Now, what I want to talk to you about today is I want to talk to you about some principles that we learn from David's life, because I promise you, as surely, listen to me today, as surely as David faced the Goliath, Goliath called, the, the, the giant called Goliath, you're going to face some giants in 2022. You're already facing them in your life right now. There are things that intimidate you. There are challenges that are coming against you that want to defeat and destroy you. And you've got to decide what you're going to do in the face of the giants, the Goliaths, the challenges that come in your life. And I think it's extremely important that we learn from a man who knows how to win a victory. How about you, okay? You don't learn too much from someone who doesn't fight a fight, but you learn a lot from someone who knows how to fight the fight and fight it well. So let me give you five things on this first Sunday of the new year that will help you to defeat your giants for the next 12 months and for the rest of your life. Are you ready for this? The first thing that is essential is you have to identify your challenges, or we might even say here, actually a better word for that was identify your giants, the giants in your life. Life challenges and life giants come in many different forms. They don't always look the same, okay? They don't always look the same to, 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 to various people. You, you have different things that come up in your life that would be different from your neighbor, different from someone else that you know in your life. We all fight our own battles, amen? My battles are different from your battles. They may, there may be some similarities there. But we all have different things that we struggle with in life that want to destroy us in some way. And in this story of David conquering Goliath, what you have to understand is that David had some things to overcome before he actually faced Goliath. Do you know that David enters the battlefield and he's considered a young boy? He has the disadvantage of age. So he's got to overcome the fact that I'm younger than everybody else here. I'm not as old as all, as all these soldiers. I'm not as ex- experienced as all of these soldiers. He could have easily talked himself out of the battle before he even engaged it by saying, I, I can't do this because I don't qualify. I'm not of the age of qualification. I'm too young. For some of us, it might be, it's not that I'm too young. You're, you're saying to yourself, my, my giant is I'm too old or I don't have enough education. I don't have enough experience. I don't have whatever the fill in the blank might be. Not only did David have to overcome his age, but he had to overcome the ridicule of his brothers and all the soldiers around. They started making fun of David. David, you think you're going to fight this battle? Who do you think you are? All these soldiers here, and you show up delivering bread and cheese, and you think you're going to fight this battle? And so he had to overcome his age. He had to overcome the ridicule of his brothers, the questions and the doubts that came from the crowd. And even Saul himself, the king, said, you can't, you can't, go, can't go and fight this, this giant you're just a boy, and if you're going to go fight him, you're going to have to wear my armor, and that armor didn't fit him, and it was not something he could fight with. But David had his own issues before he even faced Goliath. And I don't know what your issues are today, but I will tell you something. Until you identify what your giants are, until you understand what you're battling, you'll never be effective at battling it. And so I want to ask you today, as you start a brand new year, do you know your giants? What are the things in your life Is it fear? Is it worry? Is it anger that you're carrying towards someone? Is it resentment that you have in your heart? What is the giant? Is it a financial pressure that you're under? What if you were asked today with a piece of paper to write down the giants? in your life, have you stopped to think about the things that you really need to overcome in your life right now that will allow you, as we're going to talk about next weekend, to start moving forward? Do you know your giants? What are the giants in your life? Because you will never fight a giant until you know the name of your giant. 
You have to know the name of your giant to effectively fight your giant. And so it starts with a process of analysis, a process of awareness, a process of let me identify in my own life what I need to be focused on. Because if you don't know what to fight, you'll not fight the right fight. If you don't know what to fight, you'll fight things that you don't need to be fighting in your life. And so that's why you have to identify what are my spiritual enemies right now. Not your fleshly enemies. The Bible says that our battle is not with flesh and blood, but with principalities and powers and rulers of wickedness in heavenly realms. It's Ephesians chapter 6. And so what you need to worry about in your life, and so do I, would not be the natural enemies of life, but the spiritual enemies. And I'll come back that, to that in just a moment. The second thing that you must do is understand the importance of the battle. You've got to understand how important this battle really, really is. I want you to take look, a note with me of something that really gives us a cue to David's perspective in this, and this is from the New King James Version, verse 29. As he was being ridiculed, as David was being ridiculed about his willingness to go fight the battle, uh, people were trying to discourage him from doing it. David said, what have I done now? Is there not a... David said, I've surveyed the situation, and I've realized that there's a reason for me to fight. There's, I understand that there is a cause, there is a reason. I understand that this is extremely important that I do this. If I don't do this, some consequences are going to occur. And so David understood the seriousness of the situation. What I want to point out to all of us today is this, that if you're not willing to fight your spiritual battles, if you're not willing to stand against your spiritual enemies, there will be consequences in your life. There are reasons why you need to fight in 2022 because it's setting you up for 2023 and 2024 and 2025 and 2050 should you live to be that long. But all of these things in life right now, there's a cause, there is a reason. What was the reason? Well, notice as David describes the seriousness of the situation here in verses 8 and 9, earlier in that chapter, Goliath stood and shouted a taunt across the Israelites. Why are you coming out to fight? He called, I'm a, I am the Philistine ch champion, but you're only the servants of Saul. Choose one man to come down here and fight me. If he kills me, then we will be your slaves. But if I kill him, what will happen? You will be our slaves. I would call that a pretty serious situation, wouldn't you? David knew that unless somebody successfully faced down Goliath, the result would be slavery and bondage for his people and for his nation, that this would not turn out well unless someone was willing to fight the fight. It would result not only in the loss of lives, but it would, it would result in the loss of people's liberties. It was no small crisis. It was very significant and very important. You and I need to measure and grasp the significance of the struggles that we're facing in life and why we need to fight our spiritual battles. What will be the consequences if we don't? Let me show you several things. Actually, I'll give you three things that happen in your life if you don't fight your battles. Let me tell you what giants do to you. First of all, giants are going to stop your progress. They were at a standstill. Were they not? Nobody's moving, nobody's, nothing's going on good in, in either of these situations. And so in your life, if you don't fight some battles, I promise you, you're going to have progress that'll be stopped. Progress means moving forward, moving onward in your life. It's advancement towards something that is better, something that's a more complete situation. And your giants want to stop your progress. Worry wants to stop your progress. Fear wants to stop your progress. Anger wants to stop your progress. Brokenheartedness in your life wants to stop your progress. All kinds of issues that come our way want to, in giant form, want to stop our progress. Second of all, giants will paralyze you. That's similar to stopping your progress. But what I want to emphasize is the internal aspect. To stop your progress could be considered more external. You're not moving forward, but paralysis is something that happens on the inside of you. It gets a hold of your thinking. You're unable to think and you're unable to act. And all of this 
paralyzes you. Many people can understand the paralysis of things like fear and the paralysis of things like worry and the paralysis of things like shame, how these things paralyze us. They stop our progress. They paralyze us. And then I will tell you that your giants, if you don't fight them, are going to penetrate your boundaries and plunder your resources. See, I'll tell you what the devil wants to do. He wants to get into your life. Are you hearing me today? The devil wants to get into your world. He wants to get into your life. He wants to mess with your stuff. He wants to, he doesn't, he doesn't want you to establish a boundary so he has no entrance point. He wants to trample over the boundaries and get into your life. And that's why it's important that we learn how to establish spiritual boundaries in life. And once he gets in, the devil always plunders the resources of your life. He is a thief. He will steal from you time and time and time again. He will steal you blind. Will take everything from your life. Jesus said, the thief comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. And so you and I need to be willing to fight the fight. We need to understand that we're picking the right fight by identifying what our giants are, realizing it's serious, understanding there is a cause to fight. Here's our third thing today. We're going through five of these. The third one is this. You got to commit to engage the fight. David accepted the challenge that no one else, I'm not sure of the exact numbers of the armies of Israel at this particular time. It might be in the text. I'd have to go back and look at it again. But it's a fairly large army, at least for a small country like Israel at this time. But among all these soldiers in the army, including the king himself, King Saul, who should have been out front leading the battle, no one was willing to commit to engage the fight. Forty days, here's Goliath coming out and intimidating Israel's army. And the Bible says that the soldiers would run toward Goliath and then Goliath would speak and they would turn and run back in the other direction. No one wanted to fight the fight. But David steps up and we read it earlier, I will fight this giant. I will fight Goliath. He committed himself to something no one else was willing to commit himself to. He said, I will, notice that word, I will fight Goliath. See, giant challenges are never overcome until you make a commitment to fight. You've got to commit to get into the fight. And David made up his heart and made up his mind that he was going to be a fighter. And I want to remind you of something here today. Commitment always precedes engagement. Let's go to the natural world. If you find, if you're going to get married, somebody's going to make a proposal, right? Okay. But I assure you, you better be committed in your heart before you give a ring. Some of the ladies need to say amen right there, okay? Are you hearing me today? You don't give a ring until it's established where? In your heart. The commitment in your heart precedes the action with your life. And so it applies in the spiritual realm. You become a fighter in your heart before you become a fighter in the spiritual realm of your life. Are you tracking with me today? Something has to change inside of you that says, I am not going to put up with this spiritual enemy in my life anymore. I'm not going to let this adversary traffic his way into my life and push my boundaries out of the way and come in, steal from me and kill me and destroy my life and destroy destroy my family. No, I'm making a decision in 2022 on January the 2nd, 2022. I'm making a decision as I'm sitting in church today that I am going to be a fighter. Now, I, I, the fight hasn't started yet, but it's already started inside of me. I've committed myself to engage the battle. I want to tell you today that until that happens, until something rises up inside of you and says, enough is enough. I'm tired of the devil pushing me around. Any of you tired of the adversary pushing you around and playing around with you and messing with your mind and messing with your life? Anybody tired of that? If you're not, I'll just go ahead and say, hey, amen, we can all go home today because the rest of this message is not going to help you, okay? Because until this, there's something that triggers inside of you. There's a click point inside of you. 
It has to happen in you before it'll happen any other place. And my prayer this weekend is that there'll be a commitment that will rise up inside of you to say, I am going to fight my battle, my spiritual battle. Here's the fourth thing. We have two more to go. The fourth thing, you then have to identify your resources. Once you make up the, your mind to fight the fight, whatever your spiritual giants might be, you've got to say, okay, what am I going to fight with? Okay. I made this big choice. I'm going to fight, but I better, get some, I better get some artillery here if I'm going to fight the fight. And so David had some resources that he used in the battle. And you have some resources that will make you victorious in your battle as well. Let me walk you through some of the resources that David had that you have too. I want you to say with me today, I'm not playing games with you. I'm trying to help you spiritually. I want you to say, I have the resources. Say it with me. I have the resources. Come on, say it again. If you're not convinced of this, I promise you, no matter how much you want to fight, unless you know you've got the resources, you'll never engage the battle. And so whatever your spiritual enemy is, you've identified them, you've realized there's a cause, there's a reason I need to fight this stuff, because the future is, is going to be determined by what I do. Now I've made that my mind up. I'm going to be a fighter. This thing has clicked inside of me. I realize this is important to me. And now what am I going to fight with? You have the resources. Say with me again as though you really believe it. I have the resources. One more time. I have the resources. You have the same resources that David had. What resources did David have? You ready for these? Number one, he had faith in God. The Bible says that when you have faith in God, even like a little mustard seed, the Bible says you can speak to a mountain and tell it to move and be cast into the sea and it will obey. Why? Because faith does you don't have to have a lot of faith. You just have to have faith in the right one. Okay. And so David approached this battle with the conscious awareness that it was not his battle. How many times did you see him say, as I read a few moments ago, God will fight for me. It's the Lord's battle. It's not mine. And the same is true in your life. If there's an enemy coming against you spiritually, trying to defeat your life, I want you to know that the Lord is on your side, okay? The Lord wants to fight the battle for you. So we start with faith in God. If you say, I'm not sure if I have faith in God today. Well, let me explain what faith is. Faith is, is the confidence that God is and that God rewards those who diligently seek him. To come to God, we must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of those that diligently seek him. I've talked about this before. I like to bring this home to you because we complicate faith. It's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It's believing that God is and that God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. You don't need to raise your hand, but it would be wonderful just for your own sake to shake your head as I ask you this question. Do you believe that God is? Do you believe that God is? If you do, shake your head. Do you believe that God is? Do you believe that God rewards people who diligently seek him? I believe both of those things. If you believe those two things, you have faith. Can't see God, evidence of things hoped for, things not seen. You can't see him, but I still know that God is, and I know that God is the rewarder of those who seek him. The way I know that God is, is God revealed, God revealed himself to, to us through his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus came from heaven to earth, and he was indeed the son of God. He died on the cross. He rose from the grave, proving he was the son of God. And he said, God sent us a message through Jesus, I am. I am the I am. So faith in God it is a resource that you have today. Second of all, you have the backing of God. The Israelites, this is important, the Israelites saw Goliath, David saw God. That's not a trite little statement. All the other Israelite soldiers, all they could see was Goliath. They couldn't see anything else, but David stepped on the scene and he had a resource because he didn't look at Goliath. Goliath was big, but God was way bigger. He was not seeing the giant. He was seeing the one who could defeat the giant. I'll tell you another thing that David had that you have as well. David had some past victories. When they were questioning David about his ability to fight Goliath, he says, well, let me tell you something. I've got some experience here. 
There was a time that I was taking care of my dad's sheep and, and, a, and, a, and a bear came along and, and, and I rose up and, and I defeated the bear. And there was a time that a lion came along and, and God helped me to rise up and, and kill the lion. If I've slayed the lion and if I've slayed the bear, God will help me to slay this giant called Goliath. And all of you in your life today, whether you realize it or not, you have some past victories. You wouldn't be here today if God had not already done some things in your life. There's some battles that have already been won. You're not the same person you used to be. God has won some wonderful victories for you. And what you need to do for a moment is just look back and say, you know what? This isn't my first rodeo, okay? I've got some battles that are under my belt because God has brought me through. Has God brought you through some stuff in your life, okay? I'll ask you again, has God brought you through some stuff in your life? He's brought you through some stuff in your life. You wouldn't be here today if God had not already brought you through some valleys and some difficulties and some challenges. And sometimes we go through those things just to learn that God is with us in the midst of it. And so there's some past victories. You have faith in God. You have the backing of God. You have some past victories in your life as well. You have some, here you go, present strength and character in your life. There's strength inside of you. You say, well, no, I'm weak. That's your strength. The Bible says, let the weak say, I'm strong. You say, well, I'm not sure I'm able to do this. Well, you don't have to do it. I can do all things, not myself, but through Christ who gives me the strength. And so it is not my strength, but it's God's working and strength inside of me. And so each one of you today who know Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, you have strength residing in you. Why? Because the Holy Spirit lives in you in you the same spirit that moved upon the face of the deep when God said let there be light that same spirit lives inside of you the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells inside of you it is not your strength that matters it is the fact that God's strength is within you he's living inside of you and then you also have this wonderful resource called the word of God David went to the brook, and what did he pick up? Five smooth what? As far as we know, he only had to use one. Somebody said, well, why in the world did he pick up five? Okay. Someone has has supposed that maybe Goliath had four brothers. Who knows? Okay. (laughs) But the reality is, it wasn't the stone that would kill David anyway. Do you understand that? You throw a rock at a nine foot tall, massive person, if they don't deflect it with their hand or with their shield, and the Bible said he had a shield and a javelin, it hits them. It's not not going to be a fatal blow. Are you understanding me here? That rock has to be empowered by something. If it's going to kill or knock down a giant, it has to be empowered with something other than that which is human. And it has to hit the exact spot that will fell a giant. Okay, are you hearing me? So when David slung that stone toward Goliath, the minute it left the pocket of that, that slingshot, the Spirit of God, I'm not making this up, this is what had to happen. The Spirit of God came in behind that stone and like a laser bomb directed it to exactly the spot on Goliath's helmet that was not shielded or protected and hit him with such a force that it knocked him to the ground. And that stone represents the word of God, that when you speak God's word against the enemy, when you speak God's word against those forces that come against your life, there is power in the word of God. The Bible says that the word of God endures forever, that it is powerful, sharper than any double-edged sword. There is power in the word. It was the word that spoke all of creation into existence. God spoke, let there be light, and there was light. God spoke, let there be living creatures, and there were living creatures. It was the word that was spoken that gave power and strength. That same word is available to you and me. 
It's the word that we use. It's the stone that we put in our slingshot and we cast that stone and God comes in by the power of his spirit because the spirit and the word always work together. It's not the spirit or the word. It is the spirit and the word that work together. We have the word because of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says holy men of God were moved by the spirit to give us his word. And so you can't divorce the word of God and the spirit of God. And so when there is the word of God, there is the Spirit of God, and there's the direction of God that goes right at the most vulnerable, vulnerable part of the adversary to lay him flat. And I love the fact that David walks over. I'm not sure exactly how he did this, but he takes Goliath's sword. And here's the guy that's down. And the biggest problem, the biggest problem that Israel had had with Goliath was not his his massive strength, it was his mouth. Are you hearing me? It was not the fact that he was big, it was the fact he had a big mouth. Okay. Right? Because he would come out, blah, 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 blah. Exactly what the devil does to you. He shows up in your life and he says, blah, 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 blah. You think you're something. You think you're going to be a Christian. You think you're going to make it past this problem. You think you're going to overcome this. You think you're going to get beyond this issue in your marriage. You think, and just all these lies of the adversary spouting this and blah, 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 blah. And so David said, I'm going to make sure that you never say anything again. Give me the sword. He grabs the sword and he cuts off Goliath's head. That'll stop somebody from talking. There in that moment, as the head is decapitated, as, he, as Goliath's head is decapitated from his body in that moment, there was a victory that was won. And I want you to understand the same resources that David had applies to you as well. And this is the last thing I want to mention today. Go out in 2022 and do what? Fight the fight. Just make sure you're fighting the right fight. Valuable to understand as we're wrapping up here today. Notice again what happens here in the story. As Goliath, we just talked about it, but I want to give you this this from Scripture. As Goliath moved closer to attack, attack, David quickly ran out to meet him, reaching into his shepherd's bag and taking out a stone. He hurled it with his sling and hit the Philistine in the forehead. The stone sank in and Goliath stumbled and fell down on the ground. So David, I want you to put your name there today. What's your name? I want you right now to say your name and that word. Come on, just don't be afraid. We're in Genesis. It's not, you can do this. It's all right. Nobody's going to arrest you. Okay. So put your name right there. Does that sound pretty good to you? For a couple of you, okay. Let's try it again. You take, what's your name? Just say your name, okay. Now I want you to say it right now with this word. Isn't that awesome? If David triumphed, he triumphed because of God. And if you triumph, you'll triumph because he's for you and not against you. So David triumphed over the Philistine with only a sling and a stone for he had no sword. Then David ran over and pulled Goliath's sword from its sheath. David used it to kill him and cut off his head. When the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, what did they do? They turned and they ran. Amazing story. David won the battle with Goliath in his heart and in his head before he won it in any other manner. And I want to conclude by giving you some things that you need to have in your heart that are valuable. This is the last last thing I want to talk about today. Three attitudes that I want you to go out with today with the conviction in your life that victory is possible. What is a conviction? It's a belief that's deep inside of you that says, I can triumph too. Conviction that it's possible. I can overcome. Say that with me. I can overcome. That's conviction. Next attitude is confidence, okay? I want you to leave today with confidence. What is confidence? Confidence says, I will overcome. Say it with me. I will. So here are two attitudes. I can 
overcome, and I will overcome. Now, understand, we're not talking about you and your own strength or power. This is out of relationship with God. So let's try it again. I can overcome, and I will overcome. And then the next one is courage. I will not let fear control me. Say that with me. I will not let fear control me. Okay. I can overcome. I will overcome. I will not let fear control me. And here's the last one, an attitude of persistence. I will not give up or give in until the battle is won. Say it with me. I will not give up or give in until the battle is won. So here are the things I want you to leave with today for 2022. By the grace and power of God, I can overcome. By the grace and power of God, I will overcome. By the grace and power of God, I will not let fear control me. And by the grace and power of God, I will not give up or give in until the victory is won. Would you bow your heads with me as we pray today? Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity we've had to be in your house today to study your word. We believe that you're saying something to us today that really sets us up for a win this year, Lord God, in, in the kingdom of God. And I pray that these words would sink in. I pray that the same spirit that David possessed would fill us. That's the power and strength of your Holy Spirit. And I pray that this year would be a year of victory for us, for your glory, in Jesus' name. I would like to close today by giving you an opportunity to ask Jesus to be the Lord of your life. Would you pray with me right now? Right where you are, just simply bow your head with me, and I'm going to give you a prayer to pray. And you can simply speak this prayer out, whisper this prayer out, and from the sincerity of your heart, call upon God, and I promise you that He will hear and answer you. So let's pray together. Start by simply whispering the name Jesus. Let there come uh, from your heart just the declaration of His name. Say, Jesus. I know that, that I am a sinner, that I have fallen short with you. I'm sorry for all of my sins. Jesus, I believe in you. I believe that you are God's Son. I believe that you are the Savior of the world. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. And I believe that you rose from the grave, that you are alive today. Now pray these words. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. Give me a new start in you. I commit my life to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer with me, I want to encourage you with a promise from God's Word that says that when we call upon God's name, we call upon the Son of God, there is salvation that comes to our lives. He changes us from the inside out, and you become a new creation. All things pass away. All things become new. And that's exactly what has happened to you today. Your next step really is to make sure that you get into a good Bible-believing church. And you begin to study God's Word, get God's Word in you, and to make sure that you get a copy of the Bible if you don't have one and begin to read it. Spend some time every day in prayer. And I would encourage you also to check out the resources on our website that will help you to get going in your relationship with Jesus. You can find them at church-redeemer.org. Get those into your hands. Get started in your new life with Jesus Christ. Thanks again for joining us today. May God bless you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.